Good morning, Year 6. It's Mr. Nicholson here. Just going to get to the right page for the start of the lesson. So it's our second English lesson of the week. Um, I want you to pause the video just for a second and write the date and title into your English book, please. Okay, so it's Tuesday the 12th of January and we are looking at preposition and adverbial phrases today. But before we get um, stuck into our main lesson, we're going to do a bit of total recall. I've got um, a piece of text here saying that Frank would like to go to Cornwall next summer. He might also visit France in the spring. And what I want you to try and do is work out where this semicolon should go in that piece of text. We've done a little bit of work on semicolons um, in the autumn term. And if you remember, semicolons uh, separate two main clauses. So see if you can figure out where the first main clause will finish and where the second main clause will start. Uh, write the sentence into your English books, put the semicolon in, and then pause the video, and I'll reveal the answer in a minute. OK, so let's have a look at this one then. So um, I think the first main clause would finish after the word summer, because Frank would like to go to Cornwall next summer is a main clause that makes sense by itself. He might also visit France in the spring is also a main clause that would make sense on its own. So the correct answer would be, Frank would like to go to Cornwall next summer, semicolon. He might also visit France in the spring. Well done if you put the semicolon in the correct place and got that one right. OK, preposition and adverbial phrases. Have a little look through today's wilf. Um, the different things you need to do for bronze, silver and gold and challenge. But you're basically going to be given a set of simple, boring sentences and you're going to improve them by adding in these special phrases. I've chosen perseverance and resourcefulness as our learning powers today. And the reason we're doing this today is because by the end of the week I want to have a really good, well-written set of instructions that explains how mummification works and links to our ancient Egypt topic. And prepositional and adverbial phrases can make instructions really clear. So, for example, if you said to someone to go out and ride their bike, um, you know, they'd know what to do. They'd go and get on their bike and start riding it. But you can make it much clearer by saying, uh, go out and ride your bike around the street. And then they'd have more of an idea and the instruction would be much clearer. Normally we would talk to our partner in the classroom and have a little bit of a chat about what a prepositional phrase might be. We've looked at the words preposition and phrase before. So just pause the video, have a little bit of a think to yourself uh, what you think a prepositional phrase might be. OK, so a prepositional phrase is basically a group of words, a few words, that explains where something happens. OK. Um, it usually includes a preposition, so those words like under and over and around and beneath and above. Um, but it does not include a verb, because if you remember, a, um, a, a group of words that includes a verb is actually a clause. So let's have a look at picking out the prepositional phrases from these sentences. Let's start with that top one. The general ordered the troops to retreat to the valley. I think I might reveal the answer for this one for you, uh, just so you understand what you need to do. So the prepositional phrase for this one is to the valley. The general ordered the troops to retreat is the main clause. And then to the valley just gives an extra bit of information. It includes the preposition to, and it just uh, finishes off the sentence. I'll reveal the second one as well. And the answer is inside the egg. And that explains where Julia found the present. Jules was delighted to find a present. And then we've got a prepositional phrase inside the egg. What I want you to do now is pause the video for a few minutes and write out the final three sentences. And when you've written out the three sentences, I would like you to underline or circle, or you could even write in a different colour, the prepositional phrases. So we've done two together and I've shown you two, and I want you to have a go at, at numbers three, four, and five, 
and then come back to the video and press play in a moment and I'll reveal the answers and you can tick or cross them um, as you see fit. Right, let's reveal the answer to these then. So, the mic sentence, the prepositional phrase is up the hill, um, which is explaining where he thinks he can't run. On the next one, it's round the back, but there's also a tricky one in the middle, which you might not have noticed, which says in the box. And the final one is into the ancient woods. So we've got an adjective in that one as well. Uh, well done if you got all those correct. Let's have a little bit of a look at adverbial phrases now then. We've talked a lot about adverbs in school. Think about what adverbs can do and just have a little bit of a think about what an adverbial phrase might be. Okay, so adverbial phrases, you've been using them a lot in school. You've used them in years, all years, not just year six, because you're always talking about fronted adverbials. So they appear as part of a sentence. They do not make sense or alone on their own. And adverbial phrases tell us how, where, when, how long or why. So it just gives more detail to the sentence. Let's see if you can pick out the adverbial phrase from each of these sentences. So let's have a look at the first one. With a smiling face, he accepted the award. So in this one, the adverbial phrase would be with a smiling face. It appears as part of a sentence. It does not make sense on its own. And it tells us how the boy or the man accepted the award. Let's have a look at another one. Milo liked to sleep on his master's bed. Pause the video and underline or circle or write in a different colour the adverbial phrase in this sentence. This one would be on his master's bed. And this adverbial phrase tells us where. So adverbial phrases and prepositional phrases can be the same thing. It can't be Milo like to sleep, because that includes a verb. Um, so it would make sense by itself, it would be a main clause. On his master's bed appears as part of the sentence. It does not make sense alone. And it tells us where Milo was sleeping. Pause the video and have a go at this one. For eight years, she waited for a rescue ship. Circle or underline or write in a different colour the adverbial phrase in this sentence, and then I'll reveal the answer. OK, for this one, the answer would be for eight years. It appears as part of the sentence, but it doesn't make sense on its own. And in this case, the adverbial phrase tells us how long uh, she was waiting for the ship. And let's try the final one. He would not do a bungee jump because of the danger. Which part of that sentence do you think is the adverbial phrase? Okay, I'm going to reveal the answer now. So pause the video if you haven't finished this bit. The answer is because of the danger. It's the subordinate clause of the sentence. It includes the word because, but it doesn't make sense on its own. And in this sense, it tells us why. It explains why he would not do the bungee jump. What you might notice on all of these sentences, if you read out the, the black parts of the text, they would make sense. He accepted the award. Milo liked to sleep. She waited for a rescue ship. He would not do a bungee jump. And hopefully you're starting to notice that the adverbial phrase adds a, <laughs> bell's going again, adds a little bit of detail to the sentence. He accepted the award with a smiling face. Milo liked to sleep. On his master's bed, she waited for a rescue ship for eight years. He would not do a bungee jump because of the danger. And you might also have noticed that the adverbial phrase could go at the beginning, it could be a fronted adverbial, or it could go at the end. And it doesn't really matter, it can work in both ways. So for example, you could say, she waited for a rescue ship for eight years, or for eight years she waited for a rescue ship. And both sentences would be fine. Your task today is to add these sorts of phrases to some very simple sentences. And I'm going to put that list of simple sentences on the screen in a minute. And you can pause the screen and have a go at writing the sentences into your books. But remember, when you write the sentences into your books, 
I want you to add phrases to make the sentences clearer, to make the sentences more detailed, to make the sentences easier to understand. To give you an idea a bit more about the Wilf, Bronze, Silver, Golden Challenge, I'll just show you a waggle. So, here we've got the very simple sentence, wash the body. If you were changing that to a bronze sentence, you might write something like, using a cloth, wash the body. If you're changing it to a silver, you might write something like, using a cloth, wash the body on top of the wooden table. And if you are changing it to a gold, you might write something quite complex, actually, such as, using a cloth, wash the body on top of the wooden table until clean. So as you can see, the more phrases and the more detail you add to the sentence, the better wealth that you're achieving. And then we've got a really tricky one at the end, which uses a semicolon too for a challenge. But remember, if you put a semicolon in, you have to then follow it with a main clause. OK, everybody, what I'm going to do now is reveal the simple sentences for you. And I want you to not just copy them into your English books. That would be too easy. I want you to look at as many as you can. You can do as few or as many as you want and change them into more detailed sentences by adding these special phrases, these adverbial and prepositional phrases. OK, so just bear with me a second while I take this PowerPoint off the screen and put the sentences on the board for you. OK, so I've got it saved at the bottom here. OK, so if I move this up a little bit, we can see the first few. So here are the first few, and there are also some at the bottom. So what you can do is you can pause the video when you need to, and then you can um, carry on a little bit and do some more if you want to. So we've got some very simple instructions. Wash the body. Remove the brain. Cut the left-hand side of the body. Remove the internal organs. Let the organs dry. Place organs into canopic jars return the heart and I want you to make each of these steps a little bit more complex by adding phrases and make them a little bit more detailed for example remove the brain with a sharp tool you could add a little bit of extra detail that one or being very careful remove the brain with a sharp tool so you're just basically making these simple instructions more detailed so we've got the first seven on the screen there. You can pause the video now and have a go at doing that with those. And then in a minute, I'll show the other ones too. OK, I'm just going to scroll down so you can see the other instructions in case you wanted to do all of the sentences today. So here are the rest of the instructions. Rinse inside the body, cover the body, stuff the body, wrap the body and place the body in a sarcophagus. As you can see, they're all instructions for mummification, um, what we were learning about yesterday. Um, and if you've got time this morning, spend a little bit of care and uh, improve these sentences as well. So pause the screen here, pause the video, and write these sentences into your book, but make them more detailed. OK, everybody, I'm just going to go back to the final slides of the lesson now that you've had a chance to. Uh, do your task in your English books. So I'll just bring the, um, the PowerPoint back up. Um, so what I want you to do just to finish the lesson off is have a look at the set of instructions in front of you in your English books. And if you have used an adverbial phrase, a phrase that explains how or how often or um, when something should happen, I want you to underline that. And if you've exam used an example of an adverbial at the front, I would like you to underline that too. And if you've used an example of a prepositional phrase, a phrase that tells you where something happens. So, for example, uh, wash the body on the slanted table. So if you've used examples of these phrases in your work, say, I would like you to underline them. OK, that's the end of today's English lesson. Hopefully you've taken your time with that. Um, and you've worked really hard and you've got a set of quite detailed instructions about the mummification process in your books now. Uh, if you would like to, you're more than welcome to send your pictures of your work into your teachers. Um, don't forget to use the chat tab on uh, Microsoft Teams 
and we would be delighted to see what you've been doing and how well you've been writing this morning. Okay, everybody, I'm off for now. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll speak to you on YouTube or on Teams um, quite soon. Goodbye.